All right, guys, we're here at Roswell Wake Air's Cocoa Warehouse. We're going to bring out an aviator tower, show you how to set up the tower, install it on the boat, go through its step-by-step -step process. First thing you want to do, get a nice clear area that you can set up the tower. We chose a nice uh, soft rug to lay the tower out on. That way we can build it without damaging the product. Now that you've got everything boxed up, we've got this sectioned out into the five main sections of the tower. We've got our center section, we've got our port main section, our port base, our starboard base, and our starboard main section. I find that it's easiest to lay it out this way. It just makes it easier to install the base onto the side section and then install everything as a whole. You're gonna need a torque wrench, a 5 16 hex head, you're gonna need your main pivot bolts, and some red Loctite. So you wanna make sure to apply a good amount of Loctite around the threads. You wanna get the Loctite all the way around the bolt. I like to put a little extra on this bolt and I'll typically just roll them together. Give me a good bead of Loctite on both bolts all the way around. We've got the parts marked, so you'll see a starboard, starboard. I'm just gonna take, be really careful. I'm gonna slide this base over the, uh, the protective plate we've got there. Just kind of wiggle it around, get my bolt nice and started. Once I've got the bolt in there, I'm going to set my torque wrench to 25 foot-pounds and go ahead and take it in until I'm engaged. Go ahead and repeat these steps on the port side and we'll be ready to assemble the legs onto the center section. I'm going to attach our weight assist system from the side section upper portion down to the leg of the foot of the tower. On this part, the thimble that you have here where the rob line bolt goes through, on the instructions it shows that the bolt goes through. Sometimes this rob line is a little bit taut. What you want to do in that case is you want to pull the rob line out. You want to actually take a spike. Take a spike right through the rob line. Just spike the cable. It's going to hold the thimble off the tower section just a little bit. Drop the tower foot down. And at that point, you'll be able to install your bolt. Necessary if the weight assist system is too tight down inside the tower. Under normal circumstances, you might not have to. Some towers, we've got them nice and tight, so you'll just want to spike it just to make it a little easier for you to install. At this point here, I can apply my red Loctite. Get that nice and around the bolt. Get my bolt lined up. I get it into the thimble. Once I'm threaded, I go ahead and pull my spike. I get it hand tight. And I again take my torque wrench and I tighten it down to 25 foot pounds. Go ahead and repeat the same steps over on the other side of the tower. So on step C, we want to take our cam latch handle. We want it inserted into the cam latch hole, get it locked in place. You want to, on the port side, you want to take it all the way clockwise to reset the cam latch. At that point, you want to spin it clock, uh, counterclockwise and lock it until it's fully engaged. That will secure the upper and lower portion of the towers together. We're going to now repeat that on the opposite side of the tower. But on this side of the tower, we're going to actually spin it in the opposite direction. I'm going to go counterclockwise to reset my cam latch. Then I'm going to spin it around clockwise, lock it in a position. Now my two side sections are locked together and we're ready to install them onto the center section. We're going to install our side section and our center section together. While we do this, you want to first start with your starboard side section. And on the starboard side section, you're going to see some wiring at the top of the tower. You want to get rid of the, or just un unwrap the wires here. And these wires are going to actually go into the center section. But what we want to do is we want to fish our navigation light wires into the navigation plug. We've already installed a pull wire into the tower. So you want to take these wires, you want to use some electrical tape, you want to tape them together. So just loop the gray wire over here, put a little piece of tape around it, loop the pull wire around, put a little piece of tape around it. As we pull the harness through, we're going to pull our plug and we're going to do this as one unison pull right through the tower. We taped up the wires, we got ready to fish the navigation light wires up to this point, and we're, now we're ready to drop the Deutsch connector over to the port side of the tower. We're going to take, we're going to slide our Deutsch connector into the tower at the same time, get a little pull on our wires here. And then I'm going to try to shake the Deutsch connector down toward Ben. At the same time, we're going to pull our navigation wires right through. And at this point, we're ready to keep pulling the wires. 
as we set the center section down on the tower, you want to pull the white tape off the plastic protectors. You want to slide these up into the center section. You want to just slide your tower down just a little ways. We know on this tower that we're going extremely narrow, so we're going to go ahead and drop this down quite a ways. We're going on an extremely narrow beam boat, so we've already done some measurements. We know we're going to go narrow. Depending on the beam measurements of your boat, that's what's going to determine how uh, wide you set the center section. So the next step, we're going to carefully stand our side sections upright. We're going to connect our, connect our Deutsch connector wiring harness, and we're going to slide the port section onto the tower that we've already got built over here. It's much better to tuck the wires into the side section if possible. It gives you a nice cleaner shot as you're sliding the side section into the center section. He's going to go ahead and remove the tape on the plastic protectors that are on the uh, end of the end cap. And then we're ready to slide the two sections together. You want to try to get the tower about as level as possible. It's going to look pretty wide at this point. Get your, nice, get your end caps, your protective caps, get them slid into place. And then go ahead and just slide the tower together. And then just come together. Now that we've got our tower built, we're going to go take our templates over to the boat. We're actually going to do some placements on the boat, find out what kind of beam widths we're going to need on the tower. So our buddy Brad over at Menace saw the new aviator tower, decided he had to have it mounted to his classic 1988 Skino T 2001. What we're going to do now that we've got the tower actually built inside, we're going to measure the boat, try to find the proper placement of the tower feet, and get that situated on the boat. Every boat's going to be different, so you want to determine the proper tower placement for your particular boat. On this boat in particular, what we've done is we took the distances from the windshield back to the tower and we decided we wanted to place the tower just behind the driver. So we found a nice mark in the gel coat of the boat, a style line. Style lines are great use for reference, make sure both sides of the tower are positioned properly. Don't use measurements such as a windshield or a loose item that could have been installed uh, crooked from side to side. So we're taking these style lines, we're stretching a uh, level from one side of the boat off to the other and we're going to lay a piece of tape right along that. That way we know we've got a perfectly straight line on the port and starboard side of the boat that we can use as reference for placing the tower feet. Now that we've got the templates positioned on the boat properly, they're marked, we've reviewed the underneath side, we know that we've got clearance for our uh, backing plates, we've removed a little bit of the foam underneath, side, underneath the back side, and we've realized we're going to have to cut down our backing plates, but we've got plenty of structural integrity in the boat. Having the style lines of this boat that come up and the gel coat wraps around, that gives this boat actually a really nice, sturdy surface to mount the tower to. In a top mount position uh, of the tower, we're going to drill the rear feet, mount the tower, and then roll the tower forward to position our front feet. If we were to be side mounting this tower, we would actually mount the front feet first and then mount the tower to the front feet and fold it to the rear. So in a side mount, you mount your front feet first, and the top mount like we're doing here, we're going to mount our rear feet first. Now that we've got our templates positioned, I'm going to center punch the holes to mark them properly. I'm going to start off with a pilot hole. I'm actually going to use the drill bit in reverse to puncture through the gel coat. I just find it has less chance of chipping. Make sure I'm using a very sharp drill bit. So we'll go through with our pilot hole, then we'll come back and we'll actually drill with our 2764 spit for our tower studs. <laughs> Now that we've got the 27 64 holes drilled into the boat, we want to make sure to countersink our holes. Any hole you drill through fiberglass, you want to create a nice beveled edge, a nice smooth clean edge. That's going to prevent any gel coat cracking from happening in the future. Now we're going to repeat the same steps on the other side of the boat. So now that we've got the rear holes of the tower positioned, we've realized underneath that we have a really thin area to mount our backing plates. So we're going to take the backing plates into the bandsaw and we're going to rip them down to the proper width to fit inside the boat. So now we've got to take our tower foot and install the studs that go into the boat. They've got pre-applied Loctite, so go ahead and just get the thread started. Get the stud put into place. And then we're going to torque this down also to 25 foot-pounds with the torque wrench. So now that we've got our holes drilled, I've got my studs placed into the foot. I reviewed the boat itself and we've determined that the fiberglass does not need any reinforcing. We've actually got some good thick uh, gel coat and fiberglass in this area of the boat. We're going to go ahead and get our stud equipment put into place. I've got my sub plate uh, cut down to size that will fit underneath the gunwale. 
and we're going to get this mounted into place using the hardware provided. Anytime you're putting stainless nylox nuts onto a stainless stud, you want to make sure to use an anti-seize. Fortunately, I couldn't find any anti-seize around here this morning, so I'm just going to use a little white lithium grease, spray that on my studs. That's going to prevent galding from happening as I put the, uh, the nylox nut onto the studs of the tower. As I get my nylox nuts going up there, I want to make sure at the last second to stop and use the torque wrench to make sure I torque it down to 25 foot-pounds. Once I get that set, I'll move on to the next side and just repeat the same process. So now that we've got the rear foot mounted, we want to set a vertical placement on the mounting surface. And being that we're on a top mount, we're already set in a vertical, but I want to put some red Loctite on this. If you were on a side mount position, you've got multiple settings in here for the pin to insert into. Get the most vertical position that you can find, get some red Loctite put on the stud, and get the pin inserted back into place. As you get this into place, you'll go, want to go ahead and use your torque wrench again and get this torque down to 25 foot-pounds. Always remember to wipe off any excess Loctite that you might get on anything. Loctite does have a habit of damaging finishes, and we're going to go ahead and repeat these steps on the other side of the boat. So now that we've got the tower feet set, we're going to get a measurement from the outside to outside of the tower feet. Once we get that measurement, it'll let us go inside of the tower and set the uh, specific measurements on the tower itself. So now that we've got our measurements out of the boat, we're going to come inside and we're going to transfer that measurement to the feet. So we were at 80 and 5 eighths on this boat here. So we're going to get the 80 and 5 eighths measurement as close as we can to this inside, uh, the inside of the ball joint here. If we're just about a quarter inch shy, the towel will actually spread to just about that much, so we're not going to worry about it too much. The key to this measurement, now that we know we're extremely close down here, is making sure the tower is symmetrical. To make sure the tower is symmetrical, you're going to measure from the inside diameter of this tube to this tube here, and make sure that you've got the exact same measurement on both sides. When you've got that measurement on both sides and your ball joint to ball joint measurement is identical to your boat, you're ready to go. So to verify the tower doesn't move as we do our drilling, we're going to take some of our low-tack tape and we're going to follow the contour of the tower right here at the plastic fitting. We're just going to wrap this tape around, make sure that we've got it nice and even. We're going to do that on all four points of the tower. That's going to let us know as we're drilling if the tower shifts in or out and can let us hold our tower in the right position. Now that we've got the tower set on our measurements, we're going to start drilling. We're going to start off with an eighth inch pilot bit, then we're going to move our way up to our three eighth inch drill bit. As we go, you're going to drill your eighth inch bit here, then your three eighths, then you're going to start on the other side. As you insert the bolt through, you're going to start to drill this one, insert the bolt, then you're going to move on to the next one and you'll find the pattern in your instructions. When you insert the bolt, make sure that the coped washer faces the coping of the pipe properly. So you've got a little arch side and a flat side. Make sure the arch side rests on the pipe. Insert your bolt with the washer, set your other washer on, take your nylox nut, and torque these down to 25 foot-pounds. Once you get the first bolt in, move on to the second, then your third, fourth, and then follow through with all eight bolts. So as you're drilling your holes, one thing to keep in mind is make sure you're holding this plastic in place. You want to make sure that stays flat against the tube. So while we've got the aviator down here on the ground, I'm going to go ahead and install my Roswell SI navigation light. It's one thing to consider when you're adding a tower to your boat is that your navigation light, or your anchor light actually, still needs to be the highest point on the vessel. So with the SI nav light, we'll get this mounted right up here. It'll bring our white light up to the top. No adding in a pole into your boat. It's a nice feature to add to the boat. The uh, nice thing about the aviator is it comes pre-wired for the nav light. So we're just going to take the nav light, get it mounted, wire it up, and we'll be ready to go. So once we tie in the wiring down to the boat side, we'll have a nice anchor light at the top of our boat. So one of the first things you need to do when installing the nav light is you want to pick which base that you want. You've got a 1.9 and you've got a 2 and 3 eighths uh, coped base. On this tower with the aviator, we've got a uh, 1.9 cross member, so we're going to go ahead and use the 1.9. The aviator, the nice thing about it, also comes pre-wired, makes it nice and simple for you. I'm going to just set the uh, 1.9 base over the wires. It centers itself nicely. It's coped for its proper. A nice trick to get it level, I'm going to take the 2 and 3 eighths base. I'm going to set it on a, the cross member to the side of it. I'm actually going to take a level, spread them across. I'm going to center my wiring hole, 
And as I press the level on, it's actually going to put the, uh, the navigation light base nice and level for me. At this point, I can take my center punch, punch the hole, and I'll be ready to start drilling. You want to get the punch nice and centered inside of your hole. That way you can ensure that your base is nice and level once you mount the light. If you don't get it nice and centered, you don't want a navigation light that's off to the angle. So we're going to get that punched. We'll get that hole drilled. Once we get that one drilled, we'll go ahead and drill the second hole. So now that we've got the holes drilled, I want to go ahead and uh, I tap the hole with the screw just to make sure that the threading was going to go in properly. I've got a nice handy screwdriver that grabs the screw. It allows me to drop it down to the base of this. Then I'm going to take my wires, fish it up through the top, and then I'm going to thread my screw into the tower. I went ahead and pre-applied some red Loctite to the threads. Make sure I get a nice grab, make sure it lasts for years to come. Nice and tight. We'll verify I'm nice and level. Looking good. I'll do the same with the second screw. So once we get the base secured, we want to go ahead and fish the wires up through the center hole. Take the plastic base for the actual light. Get it placed on top, apply some red Loctite to your screws and screw the base down. Make sure to not fix the light to the base at any point until you're absolutely ready at the end and your wires are done. It is a one-time mount. Once you lock these lights onto that base, it will not come off. So we'll get this secured, then we'll go ahead and butt splice the wires together with the light. We're ready to heat shrink the butt splices and we'll snap, uh, snap the base into place. Once we get the wires crimped together, we get our heat shrink on there, we're going to go ahead and just tuck the wires down into the base. Once you tuck the wires, you'll find the little line, find the little line that's on here. It's going to line up with this over here. We'll get the wires tucked down in there. Once it's lined up perfect, we're just going to give it a little smack. We're locked on. It's all done. So now that we've got the tower built, we're going to carry it over to the boat and we're going to set the rear feet onto the mounts. A after we get the rear feet mounted, we'll go ahead and pivot it up and get the front feet set. So we're gonna, we already pre-applied the Loctite onto our bolt. We're gonna insert the bolt through the ball joint, put the little washer on there, bring it around. Thread it in there. Make sure the washer gets set on the shaft of the bolt. Get it nice and tight, we'll torque that down here in a minute. Now that we've got the tower mounted to the rear feet, we temporarily mounted the front feet onto the, t onto the uh, base of the tower without the studs. That way the feet are going to mount, uh, lay flat on our blue tape. I can go ahead and take a pencil. We've, we've located them exactly where we want them. I can take a pencil and trace out the outline of the uh, subplate. Now that we've got the front feet located, I can take my subplate, set it in place. I can use my center punch to mark the two holes, drill these exactly as we did the uh, rear mounts earlier, and I can go ahead and take my studs, mount them into the front feet, and torque those down to 25 foot-pounds. Once we get that, we're going to pivot the tower forward. We'll actually remove the, the foot off the tower. We'll set it down, mount it into position. Then we'll pivot the tower forward and bolt it into place. Went ahead and tied down the studs on the front. We went ahead and we drilled a 27 64th hole just on the inside of the forward tower foot. We did this on both sides, and that's going to be to run our wire down. So we're going to take our four conductor wire. Your tower came with these, uh, these clips for it. We're going to slide the wire through both clips, slide these up on the wire, then we're going to take our wire and stick it through our hole. Now the 2764th hole that we drilled, we did go ahead and clean up the edges to prevent the gel coat cracking. We're going to tuck this wire in, and we're going to take these clips, and we're going to snap them into place on the tower. And that's going to give us a nice clean finish to the wiring for the wiring on your aviator tower. All right, now that we've got the tower mounted, we went ahead and locked down our lock nuts on the rod ends. That's gonna lock these into place, make it nice and strong at this point. And we're gonna finish it off with a nice little rubber cap that we've got to go over the rod ends. This is just gonna wrap around. You're just gonna take the zip tie, zip it around. Make sure you go behind your wiring on this uh, front leg. Get it slid through, zip it into place, and then we'll just snip off the end. All right, so that wraps up our aviator install. If you have any questions regarding this, you can reach us at roswellwakeair.com or at 321-638-1331.